I want to talk today about some breakout stocks that I think you need to be aware of. The first one is Abbott Labs. Abbott Labs has come up with some testing equipment and has gotten some uh, contracts for the federal government that I think are interesting. Another one I want to talk about is Biogen. Uh, Biogen's another uh, pharmaceutical company and it's doing some uh, work on Alzheimer's and has a test in front of the or a product in front of the uh, FTC right now and is anticipating a release of it. I'm particularly interested in that um, being of my age so I want to talk about Biogen. I want to talk about Snowflake. A lot of you have asked me about Snowflake, and um, I ask, uh, in fact, in this morning's newsletter, I asked for some feedback, and I got some feedback that I want to share with you. And then I want to talk to you about uh, Big Commerce. A couple of you have asked me to look at Big Commerce. Um, it's a, I believe, a website type stock, and it's had some unusual activity today, and I got a phone call about it, and I want to share that with you as well. So we want to talk about some breakout stocks and some opportunities and some warnings, and uh, so let's let's go into the office, sit down, and uh, and talk about these things, breakout stocks. Okay, let's start with Abbott Labs. Uh, I was aware of Abbott Labs. I have a good friend who uh, uh, worked for Abbott Labs, and she tells me that they send her a nice dividend check uh, every month, and uh, she's owned it for many, many years. And as I went back and looked, I can see why she's so excited about it. In October 2012, it was selling for $29 a share, and today it's uh, selling for 111 and look at the chart. It just, it's just a straight line up. This, this is a company that I think uh, is showing it, its ability to respond to current needs, to create products that uh, are current and, and up to date. And more recently, just uh, August 26th, that it was 102, and it's now then moved up in uh, just a matter of days. It's gapped up to 111. So I see this as a stock that, uh, that I'm probably interested in putting into my portfolio and holding for some time. I then went and um, the, uh, monitored a interview with Robert Ford. That was whose picture I showed you on the thumbnail. And uh, I want to share some parts of that interview with you. Because, I, again, I have said it's important not only that you, you know the fundamentals of the company and you know its past history and you get an idea of what it's trying to do in the future, but you also have an understanding of its CEO and, and what he or she is all about. So here's, a, here's some snippets from an interview with Robert Ford. I'd say right now, this is ultimately what Abbott was built for, uh, for moments like these when uh, society really depends on a company to come through uh, with this kind of testing. Uh, we've put a considerable amount of uh, investment here, both in technology and manufacturing. We now have six UAs across a variety of different testing types and testing formats, and Binax now is, uh, is that latest effort. We started this project uh, in about April. Uh, we put a team together of about 100 different scientists, supply chain experts, engineers, uh, and really focused on two key guiding uh, principles to make our decision making. First, we wanted a reliable test, uh, but we wanted it to be easy to use and easy uh, to deploy uh, across so we could increase testing in society. And the second thing we really wanted to focus on was scale and manufacturing scale and ensure that once we had the product and had it approved and ready to go, that we would be in a position to be able to supply the market with a, with a lot of volume, a lot of scale. And uh, I was really pleased on Wednesday when we got the approval, Wednesday evening when we got the approval, that we were really able to bring those two defining principles into the test. We see it uh, you know, being able to be deployed uh, because it doesn't require an instrument like, like you stated, uh, to be able to deploy whether uh, it's through the federal government, through the state governments, uh, through schools, through employers, uh, or even through retail clinics. We think that's a great opportunity to be able to line up this volume uh, through retail, retail drive through retail clinics, um, and uh, be able to kind of deploy the test that way. 
Well, we were working with, uh, with, with the government, with the task force, uh, and a few weeks ago we were aware that uh, they were interested in making uh, a, an acquisition once the product uh, made its way through the EUA process. Uh, we received confirmation uh, of that PO yesterday, as you referred to. Right now, our, our installed capacity is, is for 50 million tests. Uh, obviously, we're not going to stop there. Uh, this was a good starting point. Uh, we, we decided to make a manufacturing investment back in May to start up two manufacturing sites here in the U.S. So that installed capacity will start to ramp up uh, that installed capacity. And I expect to be able to get to that 50 million by the end of September, beginning of October. But parallel to that, we're also adding a new team to look at how we can ramp up for that capacity. And, uh, and, and we know that 50 million tests, while it sounds like a lot, we know we need more. So my understanding is they actually have six tests, and uh, over the first half of this year, they have had revenue of uh, over $652 million uh, from the sale of their COVID-19 tests. And this latest test, which is a five-minute uh, excuse me, a $5 and 15 minute test that is not probing, sticking a probe all the way up into your brain, um, but it gives you a response or a, a positive or negative within 15 minutes. And according to Robert, it's basically for people who are systematic, but the government has already issued a $760 million contract for 150 million of those tests. So they've got a, a good second half in front of them and probably a good first quarter. Now, normally when I saw that, I said, nah, that this is an event. And, and when it's gone, it's gone. And I'm not, I'm not an interest. And because uh, a pharmacist from South Dakota, Joel, had called me, um, I think it was Sunday evening, and said, Carrie, you need to look into this. And I wasn't too warm to it. But then as I saw the interview with Robert, and then as I learned about a uh, application that they have an app for my phone that coincides with this new uh, $5, 5 15 minute test that will basically say um, you don't have the virus, and I can use that to uh, get into a restaurant, to get on into an airplane. This is exactly what I've been looking for uh, from one, one of the big six. Um, but it seems that, uh, that Robert's come up with it. They've got the app, and so I like it. So I'll be buying um, uh, Abbott. And again, as I said, it, it gapped up from 102 to 111. I'll be watching it closely and hoping that it comes down to 102. But if it doesn't, I've got some money sitting on the sidelines and I'm going to probably buy today at whatever its price is and then hope it comes down and I can add to my holdings uh, if it comes down to the, to the gap. So I like that. Another stock that I've, I've been watching that I in the same field is that of Biogen. Uh, Biogen has been working on a cure or a stopgap for Alzheimer's for quite some time. And, and they had a fallback, um, I believe, last year. And then they altered the drug and had, had a, I believe it was a good, very, very good phase two test and now are submitting or have submitted to the FDA after their phase three test. And it's uh, projected, as far as I know, as sometime next year, like in March, they will get approval for that drug. I'm interested in that drug. I'm very interested in that drug because I'm a part of a generation. And in fact, I'm at the leading edge of the baby boomers generation. And there are, there are 79 million of us. Um, we date back probably we're aged 50, uh, 53 to 73 or 74, 75 right now. 79 million of us. If you watch in my videos every once in a while, you will find that, that maybe I stumble for words or, or maybe I use a wrong word or you might see a, that I have edited because quite often maybe I forget something and I stop and I pause and then I edit that pause out of my, um, my video. This is something that is real to me. Um, I have friends who are 
are fighting dementia um, and and they're losing their memory. I see all the pills on TV that say, um, uh, I took this pill and my memory has come back and I've got the memory of an elephant. Well, okay, maybe, maybe not. But Biogen is a substantial company, um, so I'm interested in that. Uh, I'll be watching it, and it'll be on my radar, and I'll be doing research to find out where exactly they are on that. So that's a breakout stock that I think potentially. Um, Then a lot of you have been... Uh, writing me about Snowflake. Snowflake is a, as I understand it, it's a company that uh, has some software that has the ability or could potentially have the ability to merge together the various silos of of data that is held by by people like Microsoft, uh, Apple, Facebook, Google, and and Amazon. And um, so there's a lot of interest in that stock, and a lot of people believe it's going to explode. So to, in t- this morning's newsletter uh, that I send out every morning, and if you'd like a copy of it, you go here to bestofusinvestors.com, and I share with you. And in that newsletter this morning, I uh, included some information asking about, hey, this is a really a hot stock, Carrie, I'd like you to look into it. Uh, It's called Snowflake, and I think it's going to be a big winner. So I put that in the newsletter. I got an email back from another member of the tribe, which will be in tomorrow's newsletter, who works in the industry, and he had some very strong opinions about Snowflake. So if you want to learn about that, go to Best of Us Investors dot com sign up and uh, you'll get that newsletter um, uh, tomorrow morning and you'll you'll see exactly what his opinion is of Snowflake. Um, that's what we're all about. The best of us investors is not about carry. It's about a group right now where I think we just today passed forty two thousand. Um, we were at one thousand in January and I project that we'll be at one million next January of like-minded individuals who want to learn about investing and not make mistakes and and subscribe to the theory it's not so much how much you make but how much you get to keep. And that brings me to my next uh, subject of breakout stocks. A lot of you have uh, in the past written me about a company by the name of um, Big Commerce, and it was a IPO, and it skyrocketed and ran up, and um, I said it just didn't have enough fundamentals for me to get involved in, and I didn't see it as a stock that meets my number one parameter, and that is it's going to change the way I live. And I believe uh, Biogen could maybe change the way I live if it can save off Alzheimer's. Um, but Big Commerce just didn't didn't feel warm to me. So I get a call this morning from Corey, uh, and Corey's a young lady who got involved in in investing in June, and she had bought some Big Commerce and and got some write up on it, and then this morning. She saw it dropped 18 percent, and she had she had followed my directions and put a a stop loss order on her investment because she had a good um, a, a bit of profit in it. But she kept getting back from Robinhood an alert that they could not fulfill her order to fulfill her stop loss order, and she called me to notify me that. Um, that she felt Robin Hood was playing a game with her and there was some fault and I needed to let the tribe know. And I shared with her that, no, that's not what happened, Corey. What happened was you got caught in a trap and that trap is that um, when a stock drops that is not heavily traded and there are an abundance of sellers and not an abundance of buyers you get pushed to the back of the line. Now, how does she get pushed to the back of the line? Let's say she had five shares, and um, the algorithms of a hedge company is trying to sell 
uh, 50,000 shares. Uh, who do you think gets the, the order filled first? And if those orders keep coming in in droves, who do you think gets pushed back further and further in line? It's the small guy. Uh, you need to know you're playing in a big boy's game. And there are professionals, and you're an amateur. You're going to get your lunch handed to you if you play in these thinly traded, and it's not a thinly traded stock, but it it's not an established stock. And so there's a lot of risk that comes with a stock that I think it's an IPO that hasn't been trading more than a month. And it got some bad news, and it got some bad write-ups. What it did, I did a little research, is about, Four of the uh, trading houses um, and banks that put out uh, information on stocks downgraded it substantially because it wasn't meeting their expectations. Well, the droves just came in and then the algorithms came in and Corey got her lunch handed to her. So this is something that you need to be aware of. You aren't going to, Robin Hood isn't going to, when you put in that stop loss, going to say, hey, Corey, there's a good chance your stop loss isn't going to be fulfilled when you get pushed to the back of the line. Understand what happens. These brokers get paid for the amount of orders that they put in. They have a incentive to, to get the big guy's orders filled as fast as they can. So you're go, you're going you're going to pay pl play second fiddle in this. So understand what you're doing um and 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 be smart about it. Don't go playing the game of I can beat these big guys at these new IPOs and you just don't have enough information and I think uh I, I, I think big commerce is just a perfect example of it. You're going to get your lunch handed to you if you play in that ballpark. If you, though, bet on stocks that are going to change the way you live, please ask yourself when you buy big commerce or snowflake, what do you know about it? And is it going to change the way I live? Is it going to make a difference in my life? Not, not a nickel and a dime, and, but is it going to make a difference in my life? And if it is, then by all means, buy the company. Become an owner of the company. But don't go in there and buy a bright, shiny object think, thinking that you're going to make a quick buck. Because you're not.